When you want to convert web pages to PDF, you can use some special techniques that will capture information that's both relevant to the web page and the PDF, and so they blend together. For example, links and some bookmark elements for the different pages. You can even capture different pages or append them. And although you can use some of the same techniques like print to PDF or print screen, uh, these, these different web options are going to be very rich um, tools that we're going to take advantage of. So let's explore that now. Here I am in Acrobat and I'm going to use my help menu to open up the Acrobat help which is actually a web page. And you can see that it's residing here. I'm going to narrow that down to just the what's new page. And the what's new page is one page with a lot of content. As I scroll through, I can see there's quite a bit of content on here. And at the very top, I have some links that allow me to quickly jump to that content. Now, what I'm going to do here is up in the address bar, right click and copy that information. I'll come back here to Acrobat and I can create PDF from web page. Now, I've already pasted it in there, but you'd get the idea, right click and paste. I have some options in here. I can choose to get multiple levels or the entire site. I actually just want one page, and so I don't need any nested levels at this point. And I can also customize some of the settings. So for example, do I want to include bookmarks for each page? Do I want to have some of the, the link elements preserved? Also in the page layout, I can control how it's going to look when it gets converted to paper. I'm going to use the, the defaults that are here. I'm not going to change anything. So I'll just choose cancel and cancel. Oop, let me rephrase that. Let's go back in there. I wanted to cancel the settings, but I still need to click on create. So we'll go ahead and click on create. And it's building it. And it builds it pretty quickly, although it can take a few minutes. And even though there are some errors that are showing up, it's still processing. It's still building it pretty well. I'm going to click on stop, though, for the purpose of time. I've already saved this. So I'm going to go ahead and click on open and navigate to the file. It's down here. So this is an example of that file. And you can see that it's been saved as a PDF. And as I scroll through, all that information has been captured. Now, of course, it's been broken up into pages as if it were going to print the file. So it's still capturing it that way. However, if I scroll back up at the top, these different items have been captured as links. I'll come over here and you can see how those links have been retained. So that's a handy feature. And it was just this one page, and so that one page has been set up as a bookmark. I'll take a closer look in here my tools. I'm going to collapse that and open up my document processing. And when you're working with pages that you've captured, you can actually use the web capture tool to get more information. So for example, I could add another PD, another web page to this existing PDF, or I could view the links that were set up, perhaps even removing them or making changes to them. And another feature that's handy is to get page info to find out what was the original URL, where did this come from? So I can have that information as well. Now, let's go back to the browser where it still is existing here. And because I have Acrobat installed, I also have my convert tools. It's a PDF maker for Internet Explorer. And, and actually, Firefox will have these tools as well. And so I have the option of converting a web page to PDF. And I still have the option of using the print web page, which is similar here. That you could get that anytime. But when you convert from the browser as opposed to going to Acrobat, I'll go ahead and click on that. And I'll just make this a two. What you'll notice is that when the, during the conversion process, there's no prompting for settings. It simply is making that. Now, there's a warning that there will be some errors. That's OK. The errors are just going to be natural when you're converting something from HTML to or from a web intended purpose into a PDF. But you can see it created it and did a pretty quick job there. And it is a little bit different. There were some conversion settings in terms of the paper sizing. But as far as the links, they're still set up. That bookmark is still in place. And if I open them up, I still have some options for my web capture. So I can still explore those. 
Okay, now if I go back to the browser, and if I go back to the original page, I could even create a PDF from this particular page, either using my, whoops, let's do that drop down one more time, either using my drop down to web page, or I could copy and paste it and try doing a create from web page here and even do something like get entire site. Now, because that help site is very, very big, if you try to get the entire site, it could potentially take you an hour or so to get that entire site. So just be aware that it can be time intensive. Now, here's another strategy for using the web tool that we just explored. When I want to create a PDF from web page, it's possible that I'm not going to use a web page that's necessarily posted or published to the, to the website, but rather one that's internal. And so here are some HTML pages, and this is a sample website. Home indexes represents the home page or the first page. And this would be a great strategy if I wanted to share this information with other users to get their feedback of what types of pages we want, maybe some comments, and we can take advantage of the Acrobat structure for getting comments, etc. I'm going to choose to get entire site. I'll leave the settings as they are, and I'll just go ahead and click Create. Now, the warning, of course, is telling me that it could be take a while, but since this is such a small site, I know that it'll be very quick. Now, what's happening is each page is be transferring over as a bookmark, although it is, you'll notice that it's more than four pages because of the, the printing process, the conversion to print. However, the links are in place, and I can click on the link and definitely jump around and navigate. So I'm retaining information that would not be captured if I had simply chosen to create the PDF from file. And again, I have my document processing features, and so I can analyze some elements from this as a web capture. For example, getting information about the, the info. Where is it coming from? So these are some strategies that we can use when we want to take HTML pages or web pages and then convert them into PDFs.